Hello everyone, welcome to Motor on Beat Beat. My name is Alan and today I'm finding the final resting place of Graham Hill, the famous racing driver. And I'm at she Sheelanbury Churchyard. I'm going to show you behind where I'm going. And we're heading into find Graham, the most charismatic and uh, charming man you could ever meet. And a wonderful racing driver with true guts and determination. There we are, just got to find him now. That's the location. And that's the old church that's not been used for a long time. It's, um, I think it's a private house now, I'm not sure. Very sadly died when he crashed his plane on the 29th of November, 1975. In the, in the early days, he wasn't a driver even. He didn't pass his test till he was 24 years old. And um, then he saw an advert in the paper which said um, it's five shillings to do uh, to join and a shilling a lap to go around a race track and that was it it was hooked from that moment on uh, throughout his career what really made him successful was his absolute determination to win and his bravery it wasn't that he was a natural driver because he wasn't other drivers were better than him but he, he made up for it and that is very admirable when you think about it the sheer guts did it. The big accolade that, that Graham got was he was the Triple Crown winner. Nobody has ever achieved that since. So it kind of puts him in his own class. You know, in a way, he's probably the best racing driver there's ever been, and that's a fact. His first job was for BRM, and he had a very bad reputation. The cars were not very good, and he was a mechanic. Um, that's how he got his intro into the sport. But, um, it wouldn't be long, 1958, before he went to Monica to do his first race, and he came seventh out of seven. <laughs> Another aspect that actually gave him um, an advantage was the fact that he'd been a mechanic. He actually understood the car, you know, the mechanics of it. So he knew when taking it into bends, just what the car was doing, what, what kind of mechanical forces were on it. And it gave him that extra knowledge which uh, most drivers would not have had. So yes, that did give him an advantage actually, being the mechanic. He won the Monaco Grand Prix five times in total, and he did three of those in a row. Um, it was ideally suited was going to Monaco because it's a very flashy, glamorous place, and he himself was very flashy and glamorous. He had the sort of slicked back hair, you know, he used to go like that when he got out of the, out of the car, and he had the pencil moustache. So yeah, it was, the, it was very good for the press and very good for the, you know, the televisions. Um, he really played the part. So Monaco was ideal for him. Glamorous. If you're going to be, if you're going to be a racing driver, be one there. In 1962, he was trying to be world champion, and he was in competition with uh, Jim Clark. They both won three major races each, and it was now in South Africa. Um, and this would be, you know, would lead to the one that was actually going to be world champion. And luckily, he had a stroke of luck because Jim Clark broke down. And so Graham Hill won and became world champion at the age of 33. Fantastic. He went to the USA to do the Indy 500. And he was in the Lotus 67, which was a, a fantastic car that had been developed. But of course, he was up against Jim Clark. The race started off and it was an absolute catastrophe. There was an enormous crash at the beginning and it left only seven cars left in the race. In that race, a disaster struck again. Jim Clark crashed and died. It was very sad for Graham Hill because they were close together. There were different kinds of people, but they were close. And that now left him as the only figurehead for Lotus. Lotus had been pushing both these drivers and now it was all on Graham. He had to step up to the mark and be the leading driver for Lotus. They didn't know where it was gonna go, but it went well in the future, it went well. In 1968, he stood into the breach and started forward, driving just for Lotus. And Graham was going to show him that he could do it on his own. And he did. He had the guts and he had the determination to do it. In 1969, Graham went on to win his second world championship. So the guy's not doing too bad, is he, really? But unfortunately, in 1969, absolute disaster struck for Graham. He had a terrible crash himself. The car was a real mess and so was Graham. His legs were badly shattered and he was taken to hospital and thought he'd never walk again. 
He was aged 40 at this point and his legs were a mess. And they said to him, that's it, you may never walk again, never mind drive. But Graham said, I want to be ready in five months time to resume my racing. And once again, the mark of the man came forward and his sheer determination again took over. He punished himself and he just drove himself, you know, to the point of absolute agony to get his legs strong again. And he did, five months to the day, he gets back in the car with great pain, ready to take on his next race in South Africa. People just did not believe that that was possible. And of course that endeared him to the press. The press loved him at that point. He had been in his wheelchair and sticks for months and here he was climbing back into the cockpit of the car to start racing again. Absolutely fantastic guy. So powerful in his determination. In that first race, Jack Brabham won and Graham came in seventh. He never ever really got back to his former driving career. But I mean, he was 40 years old. He had gone through an absolute terrible disaster of a crash and his legs were probably never quite the same. But you can't knock the guy for his, his, his power of his mind to overcome these things. Norman Graham Hill, OBE, British racing driver and team owner, who was the Formula One champion twice, winning in 1962 and 1968, as well as being a runner-up on three occasions, 1963, 64 and 65. Graham was born in Hampstead, London, Hill, and attended the Hendon Technical College and joined Smith's Instruments as an apprentice engineer. He was conscripted into the Royal Navy. He married Betty in 1965 and because Graham had spent all his money on his racing career, Betty paid for their wedding. They had two daughters, Bridget and Samantha, and son Damien, who himself later became Formula One world champion, the first son of a Formula World Champion to emulate his father. The family lived in Mill Hill during the 1960s. The house now features the English Heritage Blue Plaque. During the 1970s, Graham moved to Lindhurst House, Sheenley in Hertfordshire. Graham died on the 29th of November 1975 at the controls of his Piper PA-23 Aztec twin-engine light aircraft when it crashed at Arkley in London Borough of Barnet. While on a night approach to Elstree's airfield in thick fog, on board were five other members of the embassy team, but sadly they all died. I've been staggering round the graveyard for ages when I bumped into a very nice lady who turned out to own what used to be the church and is now a private house. Time to reroute. Yeah, so this is where the grave is. It's actually in uh, private grounds now. That used to be the church, but um, it's now a private area. But they've kindly given me permission. So I'm going to take you to see Graham Hill's final resting place. I'm going to spin it round. And those people were great, very, very nice of them. This is where his grave is. Coming in now. There we go. Right, let's get you down here so we can read it properly. There we are. In loving memory of Graham Hill, OBE, 15th of the 2nd, 29, to the 29th of the 11th, 75, aged 46 years. Beloved husband of Betty, Adored father of Bridget, Damien and Samantha. Death hides, it does not divide. Thou art but on Christ's side. Thou with Christ and Christ with me. And so together still are we. And there we go. Graham, you are fantastic. Your guts and determination made you the man you was. And the driver you was. Got the little racing cars there, look. And there we go. Thank you, Graham. What a man you were. So if you want to emulate a positive life, that's the guy to look at. He overcome his shortcomings as a driver to become one of the best drivers, if not the best driver in the world. Yeah, and um, that was all down to this. Positive mental attitude and determination. So we can take that into our lives, can't we? We can decide what we want we can decide how we feel about things not what other people tell us to feel 
and uh, that makes everything spiral up your life becomes easier and I think that's a good lesson to learn and if we all start doing that me and you times will get better so we'll take that note from Graham today positive mental attitude so don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss future films a thumbs up and a comment would be great I love those comments I read them all day long I really do and we become like a community don't we it's great superb see you all soon on motor on beat beat bye from me alan <laughs>